I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 123, Joyfully Thin Desire. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. This week and the next couple of weeks are going to be part of a three-part series. They're going to be Joyfully Thin Desire, Joyfully Thin Unbound, and Joyfully Thin Expansion. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background on these three episodes, and then I'm going to teach you something, a new tool to use in your life in each of these episodes. So those women that are in the Naturally Thin for Life program, if you're in the program, you've probably already seen the video or heard me talk about the Joyfully Thin experience. So the Joyfully Thin experience is a small, intimate group of 10 women who I'm going to take through what I call the Joyfully Thin experience. And it's only for women that have already been through the Naturally Thin for Life program, who have lost the weight or are close to reaching their natural thin weight where their weight and their weight loss struggle is no longer taking up an extreme amount of mental energy and mental space for them anymore. And my experience in my naturally thin journey was so much freedom and being so proud of the body that I had, no longer thinking about food, no longer obsessing about what I was going to eat or what I was going to exercise, like burn off the night before, none of that. I had all of this mental freedom and I almost didn't know what to do with that freed up desire for my life. I had put so much of that desire towards food and towards losing weight and towards getting to the body that I wanted that I was almost... I don't want to say stunned. That's not the right word. But I almost felt like I like looked up and was looking around like, okay, what do I do with all of this energy? And for some women, it's so obvious. They know exactly what to do and they kind of move on and continue to enjoy their life with this newfound freedom. For me, though, I ended up feeling extremely restless. So I had already felt restless in my struggle with food. But it was almost like the food allowed me to cope with it because I just would eat. <laughs> and I was surprised by the amount of restlessness I was feeling because I had the job I wanted. I was making well into six figures. I kept getting promoted. I had an amazing husband. We were talking about starting a family. I had everything I wanted, what I imagine I wanted as a little girl. And I still felt this intense restless feeling. And for me, it was a combination of many things, but it was really felt like I had this internal knowing, this internal desire for something other than the life I had. And so the Joyfully Thin experience is for these 10 women that have already gone through the Naturally Thin for Life program who want to spend the rest of their life with extreme, extraordinary joy, who want to get to know their own desires for their life. Maybe it's changing things in their lives. Maybe it's not changing anything. Maybe it's just being more present. Maybe it's being more peaceful in the life you had. I found myself wishing my days and my weeks and my months away. I was in a job that I actually really enjoyed, but I kept finding my brain saying things like, I just can't wait till the day is over. I can't wait till the end of the day where I can finally relax. I can't wait until the weekend when I finally get to enjoy myself. And then those times would come the end of the day, the evening or the weekend where I was telling myself, well, then I can finally relax. And I was just experiencing so much restlessness where I wasn't even relaxing. And so it really hit me very strongly when I was about seven months pregnant with my daughter, Gemma. And I was sitting in a meeting with other VPs and SVPs at the company I was at. And you may have heard me tell this story before. But I was sitting there seven months pregnant. I had my son, Ben, already. And 
thinking about just what I wanted for my life. And we're sitting there talking. And I don't know if some of you have this experience, but I used to have this experience in meetings where sometimes they would move at such a molasses pace that my brain was like so bored. It just felt like I was like, I had all this time to kind of daydream in the slowness of the meeting. And sometimes it just felt like my brain was already like 10 steps ahead. I'm like, I know exactly where we're going and the decisions you're going to make and all the things. And so sometimes I would kind of float away at times. And I remember having this experience where I'd kind of just float away because I was just like, I know where this is going. I was feeling really bored. And they were talking about where to put like an and or a comma or a semicolon, some punctuation and some very, to me, minute word in a cash flow statement for the company. And I just was sitting there thinking, my son's in daycare and I'm sitting here seven months pregnant. I don't want to miss my experience of my life with my children. I don't want to keep waiting for the day to be over. I don't want to keep waiting for the weekend. I don't want to keep waiting until my son is in bed. I remember being pregnant and thinking, I just can't wait till I get to go to sleep tonight because I just didn't enjoy myself today. And I'm like, I'm literally wishing my sons, my experience of my two-year-old son at the time, wishing that away. And so I drew a line in the sand in that moment. And I told myself, I will never live with regret. And this is why I make a lot of decisions for myself and my life, thinking about what me dying would say, because I refuse to live with regret. I refuse to wish my experience of my life away. I refuse to wish my experience of my children away. I just want to enjoy it all. And I want to be as joyful and present for me as possible. And that is what the Joyfully Thin experience is. It is for women who are well on their way of their naturally thin journey, who feel this tug and this pull for something extraordinary in their lives. Maybe you know what it is and maybe you don't, but who want to create the extraordinariness of their life with joy, with presence, with calm, where you don't always feel like you're racing after something. You're not continually chasing and chasing and chasing goal after goal after goal and simultaneously in the chase of your goal, missing your life. And so I don't want you to have that experience either as you're losing the weight. And so this Joyfully Thin experience is a small intimate group of 10 of us where I am teaching these women tools and concepts and teachings that I've never shared anywhere else before, not on the podcast, not in the Naturally Thin for Life program. And they are teachings and tools that I have been working on myself and developing for the last couple of years. And so I'm going to teach them these tools, teach them these trainings to really understand their desires and to unbind themselves from feeling pressure and rush and urgency so that they can expand into the most joyful experience of their life, which is why I call it the joyfully thin experience. And for these women, not only are we going to work through and they will learn new tools and trainings, and we are also going to really dive deep into me coaching them. And that's why I've kept it at a small group of 10 women so that I can coach them really deeply every week for a six-month period so that they will then know how to have the joyfully thin experience for the rest of their life, so that that will continue to compound for them year after year. And so I'm not sharing that much of what I'm going to teach those women here on the podcast, because it's for those women in that container and that group that are going to go through that process with me. But I do want to give you a small taste of it here so that you can apply some of it to your naturally thin journey. And so that if you have any of these experiences or any of these struggles or want anything that I share with you in these three episodes, you know that you're not alone and it's normal. I think one of the biggest things for me in my naturally thin experience and my experience of my life is that I was like, okay, I'm thin. I have an amazing husband, amazing job. I make a lot of money. And I have a great house and I have one child, another healthy child on the way. And I just 
was still felt like plagued with this restlessness. And so I want to offer to you that that is totally normal. And the more women I talk to, the more normal it apparently is. And that that doesn't mean anything's gone wrong. And I'm going to share with you what I think may be happening and what was happening for me and how to work through some of that. So before we dive in to the first part of the three-part series, Joyfully Thin, if you're loving the podcast, getting a lot out of it, please take a minute to write a review, leave a review that helps other women like you find the podcast so that they too truly can have the freedom of being naturally thin. So like I started to say earlier, in the Joyfully Thin experience, there are three pillars that I'm going to be taking this group of women through, and they are the title of these three episodes. And within each pillar, there's many tools and teachings and trainings that I'm going to give them, but I'm going to share just like a a smidgen, like a like a 1% of maybe what they're going to get inside of the Joyfully Thin experience. So the three pillars are desire, unbound, and expansion. So like I started to say earlier, desire is really understanding what your desire is, what that restlessness is trying to say to you. And unbound is unbinding yourself from pressure, releasing yourself from that pressure, releasing yourself from the anxiety and the stress and that kind of like hyper tense, tight productivity that so many of us do, releasing yourself from like the chasing, 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 exhausted at the end of our goal. And then expansion is expanding into the ability And the capacity to feel more joy in our lives and some other things in addition to that. But we as humans aren't really taught how to feel good and how to feel good more often than not. We are taught how to grin and bear our way through uncomfortable emotions. And we're taught to chase after goals and that those goals create our feelings for us. Those goals create us feeling proud. Those goals create us feeling accomplished. So then we spend most of our time and energy and effort feeling stressed and anxious and pressured trying to reach a goal. And then like 99% of our time feeling that way, and I'm slightly over-exaggerating, but you get my point, most of our time feeling that way, and then only allowing ourselves to feel good when we achieve the goal, which is like for a blip, right? When we maybe hit the number on the scale, or we get a certain promotion, or we make a certain dollar amount, or we buy the house, or we have the car, or we have the baby, whatever the quote-unquote external tangible accomplishment is, And then we move right back into feeling pressure and stressed and anxious going after the next one. And so we spend way more time than not, not feeling very good, (laughs) chasing after goal, after goal, after goal, and then not allowing ourselves to feel the joy along the way. And so that's what the expansion pillar is. And really letting yourself and knowing and developing the skill of feeling good feeling more joy in the creation of your goals for your life. So today we're going to talk about desire. With desire, I want you to think about desire for food first and foremost, right? We all have desire for food. We want desire for food. But when we're struggling with our weight or even when you're at your weight, but you still have so much mental chatter and mental negotiating and should I eat this or should I not eat this or is this calorie dense or how many grams of fat does this have? Like any of that, what's happened is your desire for food, even if you're at your ideal weight, you just have too much of it placed on food. And so when you align your desire for food with your body's desire for food, you don't have the mental mind games going on anymore, and you have the freedom in your relationship with food and the relationship with your body, there's so much excess desire that's freed up. And so you may find yourself along your journey to being naturally thin. You may find yourself at your naturally thin weight and you have all this desire. You're feeling really good physically. You're feeling energized and you're feeling comfortable in your body and you can put on anything you want in your closet. Like you're feeling really, really good physically, but you still find yourself maybe feeling a little restless. And you know you have extraordinary gifts and capabilities, but you feel like you're not totally utilizing them. I don't know if any of you have read the book. I want to call it Zone of Genius. That's not it. 
It's Gay Hendrix's book, The Big Leap. <laughs> and I just like, I love the cover of it because there's like a little fish in a bowl and the fish is taking this big leap and jumping. I think it's a goldfish jumping into this massive bowl. And he talks about in that book being in your zone of genius versus your zone of excellence, where your zone of excellence is essentially like what you're really good at, right? So that was totally me in my corporate CPA career. Like I was really good at it, but it wasn't my zone of genius. I knew I had a gift in my weight loss. I knew I had a gift in how I understood the human brain. I knew I had a gift in how I thought about losing weight. I knew that I lost weight and I kept it off that was totally different than anywhere I'd ever heard, that anywhere I'd ever learned, and that I wanted to teach that and give that gift to other people. I knew that was my zone of genius. And so you may also have that experience where you feel like you're great at your life, but it might not be your zone of genius. And so like I shared earlier, then I found myself not being present in my life, wishing my days or weeks away, wishing for vacations, wishing till I could finally relax. And when it hit me so hard when I was pregnant with Gemma and I drew that line in my sand, truly telling myself I refuse to die with any regrets. And when I made that commitment to myself, it sort of made me get really honest with what I wanted for my life. And I didn't really know how to understand my desires for my life. And so I'm going to share with you a couple of ways to get to know what your desires are if you hear yourself in what I've shared with you so far. I remember as a little girl standing in front of the mirror for hours, talking to myself playing out situations, scenarios, imagining myself being thin, imagining myself meeting a future husband, imagining myself as a mom, imagining myself in day-to-day -day situations and how I would respond. I remember as a little kid, we used to go to the end of our street. We lived on a cul-de-sac. We used to go to the end of the street at the stop sign and wait for the bus. And listen, y'all, I always felt very awkward as a child. And I maybe visually looked a little awkward. I was very tall. I went through like awkward phases of <laughs> like wearing the same clothes all the time because I'm a creature of habit. Even as a kid, I just found an outfit that worked and I just wanted to wear it all the time. I remember these blue corduroy overalls. I can't believe I'm telling you this right now. This was not on my notes to tell you. I remember wearing these blue corduroy overalls and then a green, white, and red striped kind of ribbony, like a ribboned textured top underneath it. And I would wear this and I still see pictures and I'm like, mom, what in the world? She's like, listen, did you think I was going to argue with you? I maybe had an attitude as a child. And then I have this red hair that's very curly. I'm tall. My weight fluctuated. I had no idea what to do with my hair. So I went through this phase of putting so much gel in it, like gel, hair gel, not mousse, not cream, gel, where it would dry and look frozen. You know when you have wet hair and it freezes? <laughs> it had so much gel, it looked frozen. And a space in my tooth, so a gap between my teeth. I was missing a tooth, like all sorts. When I started to wear makeup, I had no idea what to do. So I stole my mom's makeup and would just do it in the bathroom at school. I'm just like, as I'm telling you this, I'm like, oh, little girl. Anyways, we'd be at the bus stop and there was a neighbor girl that used to make fun of me all the time. And she would make fun of my hair. She'd make fun of what I looked like. I used to just dread going and standing at the bus stop. I used to remember thinking like, how can I just wait till the very last minute so I don't miss it, but so I don't have to see anyone. And I remember like the days she wouldn't be there, I'd be like, whew, whew, dodged one today. And I was so afraid to tell my mom. She probably doesn't even know to this day. I was so afraid to tell my mom or tell anyone. And so I would literally stand in front of the mirror. <laughs> in my bathroom and imagine the day where I would be thin and beautiful and successful and have this amazing life and this other woman who would girl would now be a grown-up woman where I'd be able to say to her like look and see 
take that. Like I remember having just like such visual images of what I wanted for my life, right? So that's just like one example, but like hours and hours and hours doing this. And I used to really know what those desires were for my life. And as I got older, I kind of stopped listening to them. I stopped asking myself what they were. So when I started to feel this restlessness and then I drew a line in the sand and said, I'm not living with regrets anymore ever again, I was like, oh, okay, like what do I want for my life? Do I know there were things I thought I wanted that I'd never even shared with anyone before? So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode, how to get to know what your desires are, how to even like tap into that, how to open up the window just a little bit. And for those of you in the Joyfully Thin experience, we are going to go real deep on this. We are going to go through many tools and teachings and trainings, and hopefully in the future, I will have some of them on here to share that experience with you. But for now, we're just going to talk about this briefly and open the window for you to start getting to know what your desires are. So the first thing I want you to ask yourself is, do you know what you want for your life? If you could have anything in your life, you could create it any way you wanted. You didn't need to rush or pressure or work all the time or hate your life in the creation of it. What would you want? Do you even know? I'm afraid I'm going to butcher her name. Her name is Tara Moore, T-A-R-A-M-O-H-R. That's how you spell it. She has a visualization, a one-on-one coach that I have worked with gave to me, and it's a visualization into the future. I think you can probably Google it and get it. And she has this visualization where you essentially imagine yourself 10 to 20 years out. I don't remember the exact time frame, but it's more than a year or two. It's like a good chunk of time. I want to say it's at least 10 years, if not 20 years. And I did this visualization and it's brought me to tears. I knew kind of what I wanted for my life, but it wasn't that clear to me. And in this visualization, it was crystal clear, like what my house looked like. I could like see my kids there, my husband there, the room, the scenery for what I looked out into the window. And what I would see on the other side of that window and like the tea I was drinking and like the colors of my house, I was like, what? I guess I do know what I want for my life. So if you don't know what that is for you, I suggest you either go find that visualization. And for those of you in the Joyfully Thin experience, we are going to do a version of that visualization and I will share with you her visualization. But even just closing your eyes and letting yourself imagine if you could have anything you wanted 10 to 20 years from now, just pick a number, it doesn't matter. Let's say 20, 20 years from now, what would it be? Write it down. And one thing that always helps me when I'm doing this is I always tell myself, because sometimes I have a little fear even getting to know my desire. It's kind of a odd experience where I'm like, what do I want? And I'm like, I don't know. Don't don't tell me what you want. And I'm like, no, what do you want? And then my brain will be like, I don't know. I mean, let's just like move on for now. So if that's you, one thing I tell myself when I'm getting to know what I want for my life, like what I truly want. Not what other people think I should want, not for what I think my kids think I should want or my husband thinks I should want or anyone thinks I should want. Just like, what do I want? I always tell myself, hey, (laughs) self, I'm going to understand what I want for my life more than anything. And that doesn't mean I'm going to go after it. I just want to at least know what it is. And so making that kind of deal with myself is really helpful. I'll tell myself, okay. I'm just going to get to know what I want for my life. And I just want to know. I don't even need to tell anybody. I just want to know. I may not go for it or I might. And the most incredible thing happened for me when I started to get to know what I really wanted for my life, when I started to do these visualizations, when I started to write down on paper what I wanted for my life. Some things came to me crystal clear, like real clear, (laughs) like, okay, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go all in on this business that I was doing on the side. Like that to me was like, yep, crystal clear. Scared to do it, but crystal clear. That's what I want for my life. And the more I listened to my desire, the more I understood my desire. And the more I then went through this unbinding process and the expansion process I'm going to teach in the next two episodes, the less and less restless I felt. 
I hardly feel restless at all anymore, which is quite fascinating to me. And so for me, I think restlessness, that feeling, that jittery, that like urge to do something else or like desire for more. To me, restlessness is just like my inner desire pulling on a pant leg, like a little kid, you know, when a little kid's trying to get someone's attention. My kids have never done this, maybe because I don't wear pants where you can grab onto them. They're always like tight pants. But like, imagine a little kid like pulling on a pant leg being like, hey, mom, hey, mom, hey, mom, right? Pulling and pulling and pulling. To me, restlessness is your desire pulling and pulling and pulling, trying to get your attention. And so the more restless you feel, my guess may be, what I want you to know for you, my guess may be the stronger and stronger your desire is trying to get your attention. The more restless I felt, the more I was just ignoring what I really wanted for my life. So here are some questions for you. What do you want for your life 20 years from now? What have you never even told anyone before? Before we end, I'll share one more story with you that I had never even told anyone before. What would you want for your life if you could just blank slate it? If you could have anything in your life and feel any way in your life, that you could have all the money you wanted without working a hundred hours a week. If you could have all the kids you wanted without feeling overwhelmed and anxious all the time. If you could have the relationship you wanted while feeling so much love and joy and equal partnership, like whatever it is, when you want to understand your desire, don't let the part of your brain that wants to be like, well, that's never going to happen, come in. You just want to understand what it is. What is it like for you to know what that desire is? And your desires don't need to be my desires. (laughs) I think that's the beautiful thing. Us as humans, we each have our own unique desires. Like, what do you truly want for your life? And don't, I'm going to caveat here, don't get caught up in things that you don't even want, right? So for example, I'm 5'11", I weigh 140 pounds right? If I'm like sitting there trying to understand my desires, I'm like, okay, I want to be 110 pounds. I'm like, no, (laughs) I have no part of me that has any part of that, that that's a desire of mine. Or for me, I'm like, okay, I really want to build the best electric car. Listen, (laughs) I have no desire for that either, right? Like I want to know my true desires. Like what do I want? And this is why imagining your ideal, perfect future, best case scenario, 20 years from now, nothing is off the table. You don't have to be realistic at all. When you imagine that version of you, what is her life like? What does she enjoy? What does she not enjoy? I distinctly remember hearing Brooke Castillo's podcast, The Life Coach School, and she was talking about little kids. And listen, you all, I love my little kids, but I'm not like a little kid person. I am not like dying to be around little kids all of the time. And I remember her talking about her and her husband at the time, and now they're divorced, but she and her husband talking about little kid birthday parties. And she's like, oh, he loves little kid birthday parties. I don't. So I just don't go. And I remember thinking like, huh, (laughs) wait, what? That's an option. So like nothing's off the table. (laughs) What do you want for your life? And what do you want your experience of your life to be? I had a client, Erin. I had her on the podcast a while back and she shared on that podcast, she wanted to have another baby. She wanted to go back to school. She wanted to start drawing and sharing on YouTube. These were things that she had desired for her life, but she was so afraid of them and her struggle with her weight got in the way of all of them. But as she released her struggle with the weight, she was able then to fulfill those desires for her life. I had another client that wanted to grow her real estate business, and she was also able to do that when she released the over desire, the over kind of attachment of her desire to food and with her weight loss struggle. And I had another client who wanted, she just wanted to enjoy her life the way that it was. She had a successful business, a husband she loved, kids she loves. They were getting ready to go to college and she just wanted to stop feeling like she was missing all of it. 
So understanding your desire doesn't necessarily even mean there's a bunch of things you want to change. I also had Sean on the podcast a few episodes back who shared that she left her teaching job and she was starting to write a book and started her own business. And it's just so much easier to understand and live out the true desires that you want for your life when your weight and food stop taking up so much mental space. Because when your food and your weight take up a fraction of the mental space that they're taking up now, when you never worry about your weight again, it's so much easier to understand your desires and then decide if you want to live them out. So I want you to, from this podcast episode, take nothing other than understanding what you want for your life. Getting to know your desire is the goal not getting there with rush and urgency, right? If you then decide what you want for your life, but you rush and you quick get there and you chase, 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 and you feel terrible all along the way, right? You've completely missed the plot. (laughs) The goal is to understand your desire and understand what you want for your life and how you want to be in your own life. So I shared this, I think I actually may have shared this on the podcast episode before, It has been a desire for my life that I have pushed way down for a very long time. But I remember, and I can still feel a little fear as I share it out loud, and so that may be you too, and you may want to share some of your desires for your life with your partner, you may want to share them with your kids or your family, and you may feel a little afraid, and you get to decide whether or not you want to share them. There were years and years and years I didn't share my desires for my life. I knew always I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So when I went through high school, when I went through college, I remember just in the back of my mind being like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm not sure exactly what it's going to look like. I'm really good at math. I'm really good at accounting. I'm like, I'm going to go into public accounting. I'll see a lot of businesses. I'll understand businesses, understanding the financials. Like it makes sense that that would be a valuable skill. And so that was a big motivation for me to choose the background of being a CPA. And I even took entrepreneur classes, and a lot of them were VC-based, so venture capital-based, and kind of in that realm. And I was like, nope, that's not the kind of entrepreneur that I want to be, and that's not the space I want to be in. And so I just always, in my mind, was like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, and I'm just going to guide that desire to making different decisions in my life. And there there was a period of time where I was like, maybe it's a fitness studio I opened. So I even looked into opening a franchise of a core power yoga studio. I was like, nope, I don't think so. But how I knew yes or no to these decisions, I was truly understanding my desire. I would go back to the place. I would imagine my life 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, and be like, no, that's not quite right. That core power yoga studio, it's not quite right. Love core power yoga, do it all the time, but it's not for me to own a franchise. And when I was a little girl, I don't know how old I was. I imagine I was like nine or 10. I remember doing these projects with my dad. So I was in a classroom setting with a teacher, a math teacher who was like, obsessed with math. And he would do all these like fun, crazy, like mental math games that you would take home as like kind of extra credit, but they were like really, really challenging and they would really challenge your mind. And my dad and I used to like love doing them together. And I used to just be like so fascinated and I would literally sit there and try to figure them out for hours and he would often help me. And I remember in those moments at one time, he told me, as we're talking about numbers of math, he goes, you know, a million dollars is amazing. Yes. And because I was asking him about money and I wanted to make money. And he was like, yeah, a million dollars is great. But he said to me something like, but you know, there are people that make a billion dollars. And I was like, what? A billion can you write that out for me, dad? (laughs) And I remember as a little girl sitting there and writing it out. I remember hearing that Oprah was a billionaire and being like, huh, okay. okay." So like, he's not lying about this women having a billion dollars thing. Literally as a little kid, I remember thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I made a billion dollars? And my goal for my life is to make a billion dollars. And now I plan to live for a very long time. So I'm like, for sure I end up making a billion dollars. 
right? And my brain today is like, whoa, there, hang on, that's a stretch. But I'm sharing this with you because the desire for that, the imagining of it is so fun. <laughs> like, even if I die on my deathbed, let's say it's even like two years from now, I'm not going to regret thinking about imagining, thinking about how I can serve this world and help so many people that I make a billion dollars. I will never regret that. If I die tomorrow, I'll be like, yes, so glad I spent time thinking about that. It's so fun. And it's also something I truly do want. So you may be like, I have got no desire for that, right? So that doesn't matter. But what is your deepest, truest desire that you're afraid to even tell people about? Do you want to start a charity? Do you want to have a shelter for dogs? Do you want to do nothing other than just love on your kids? Like, what do you want for your life? What are your deepest, truest desires? I want you to think about it. There's no rules. You don't even have to tell anybody. And there's no either ors. When you're thinking about your deepest, truest desires, you don't have to sacrifice a thing in your imagination for them. And I want you to just know what they are, to at least speak them out loud to yourself. And the goal of me dying, having made a billion dollars, is not whether or not I reach it. And I'm going to talk more about this next week. The goal is not whether or not I reach it. It's me understanding what my desires are and giving myself the love, the compassion, and the commitment and the determination to go after it. My goal in my life is to do anything I want because I want to in a way that serves me and the women in my life that I love, which are all of you, and my family that I love. So what is it for you? You want your desire, get to know your desire. It's something you actually want. What's the best case? If you could have anything you wanted, what would it be? Write it down. Tell at least yourself what it is. And I challenge you to tell those around you. I remember telling my husband that I was going to start my own business. I was going to make multiple six figures and seven figures. And he was like, uh-huh, sure. And I was like, that's okay. You don't have to believe me, right? He, it's like I could see he's so loving and supportive, but he, he's like, I'm realistic. And I'm like, me too, just wait. And he wanted to believe for me, but he's not in my brain. He doesn't understand my desire. And so when you do share your desire with other people, you get to decide whether or not you want to know that they don't have to agree or see it. There's just something so powerful in me saying it out loud to myself, me sharing that with my husband. And it doesn't matter whether or not he sees it because me saying it out loud like brings it to life more and more for me. So if there were no rules, what would the little girl inside of you say that she wants for her life? What feels like a scary secret that you've never told anyone before? All right, friends, get to know what your desires are. At least know what they are. If you want this experience, first, make sure you join Naturally Thin for Life so you learn all of the tools you need to lose the weight and keep it off easily. And if you're already in Naturally Thin for Life and want to take part of the Joyfully Thin experience, the six-month group where you will learn brand new teachings and tools, and I'm going to coach you personally in a small group of 10 for six months, head over to lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash joyful. That's lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash J-O-Y-F-U-L for all of the details. We are closing the group at only 10 women. So it may or may not still be open by the time you listen to this podcast and go to that webpage. The page will make it very obvious whether or not there are any spots left. All right, friends, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I will talk with you all next week. Friends, if you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast. And I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. 
you will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weight. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me. That's L-A-U-R-A-D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.